So now we're going to actually look at the Blackboard page so you can see what is available. So if you go into the course Blackboard page, you should see a screen that looks like this. Syllabus, schedule, links to two videos, one on how to upload a paper onto Blackboard, and the other is how to take a Blackboard quiz. If you're not sure how to do those things, click on those videos, watch them. Those are optional though, they're just there for your information. And then you also see the week one and week two folders. And if you scroll down, it'll go all the way to week six. And I organize things by week. That gives you, I think, a good amount of flexibility when the, the advantages of an online class while also making sure that the work doesn't just pile up and people get overwhelmed at the end by just, you know, putting things off because there's other things coming up in their lives. When I'm teaching an in-person class, I give people a copy of the schedule because I want them to carry it with them to class. And also I would encourage them even to photocopy it so they can put a, a copy on their wall. If you come into my office, I typically have the schedules of the classes I'm teaching up on my wall. So I can actually just look over it and then say, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what's coming due. Uh, and so this is how I need to prepare for my courses. So I highly recommend that you do this. This is a good way to make sure that you don't forget things. I'm a forgetful person. And this is one of the kind of methods that I've come up with to help me remember what I'm supposed to be doing. You'll notice, first of all, at the top, it gives my name, Dr. Franklin Rausch, and my email. Also gives my phone number and my office number. This is a summer class. I only come into the office a couple days a week during the summer. So calling me on my office phone or just dropping by my office to see if I'm there, good chance that I'm not going to be there to, to deal with the, to answer that. However, I do usually check my email multiple times a day. And as a general rule, if you email me and you don't hear back from me by in, within 24 hours, please just email me again. Send that email again. I won't be offended. Typically, I get back to people within 24 hours. So that's the kind of contact information. Now, if we look at this by week, one thing I just want to note, June 26 to 30, that's not a full week, but classes begin on June 26, which is a Wednesday. And remember, this class is supposed to be similar to an in-person class in terms of how often and for how long students meet, how often, in a sense, that we're meeting online, and in terms of how long they're in class and class time and so forth. So because of that, week one, you don't have as much work to do. Week two, similarly, is over uh, July 4th. So you don't have as much work to do because students in person would only attend three days of class, not four days of class, because July 4th is a holiday. So do keep that in mind, especially for these first couple weeks, because weeks three, four, and five will be fuller. They'll have more material than weeks one and two, because those are weeks when students would be meeting more. So just keep that in mind. Don't be, think, oh, this is easy. There will be more work later on. So what you'd want to do, you want to watch the videos linked in the videos folder, week one folder. And you'll notice I have everything arranged by week. And that's why I try and give you some flexibility. I don't say you have to, for the most part, I don't say you have to just do this on this particular day. Other than a sense of the weekly password, right, which I have due a little bit early, that's due Thursday. Classes begin Wednesday. The weekly password has to be sent to me by Thursday. Other than that, you'll see that everything is for that week is due by Sunday. And that's to give you as much flexibility as possible. Now, that doesn't mean try and watch all the videos on Sunday and do all those assignments on Sunday. That would be very difficult. You probably won't do very well. But the idea is to give you as much flexibility as possible. So you'll notice that after this says weekly password due by Thursday, there's the writing assignment due by Sunday, the introductory quiz due by Sunday, and the week one quiz. Remember, the introductory quiz is just over the syllabus and the succeeding online video portion. Uh, so that's kind of a separate quiz. The week one quiz is over all those videos uh, other than the succeeding one and so forth in the week one folder. And that's why it's arranged in this way is to kind of help you think this is the general order you should be doing things, right? You need to start watching the videos. You need to make sure you get me that weekly password by Thursday, but you want to make sure you watch all those videos and get me the weekly password before you try and do these other things. And you definitely want to watch all those videos before you watch the week one quiz. But ideally, this makes it clear what it is that you need to be doing, right? And maximizes flexibility while still keeping things on task and keeping things moving. And then week two, you can see it's very similar. Watch the videos linked to videos folder week two, weekly password due by Tuesday, writing assignment two due by Sunday, week quiz two due by Sunday as well. So try and keep things fairly regular week in and week out, but it helps just in case, because there will sometimes be differences to, like I say, print out, the, download the schedule, print it out, 
put it on a wall or somewhere else where you can easily access it. So backing out of the schedule, let's go to week one. Let's have a look at the week one folder. Like I said, you, it's pretty easy to see what is due each week uh, because you can look at the schedule and then you can just look in the folder and all the materials will be in the folder. Now, if you look in the week one folder, you will see multiple links, right? Succeeding online class, syllabus video, section zero introduction, Confucius. And if you, it will scroll down, there will be more videos and you should watch all those videos. Right? Fairly clear, I hope, you know, you would go through and watch all those videos. Now, one thing that's kind of tricky, though, is how do you keep track? How do you know what it is I'm going to be asking you? Right? How do you prepare for the quiz? That can be kind of difficult. And one way you, you do this, and I think the best way to do this, is you would download the week one study guide. Right? This is a Word document that you would download and then you would fill out. So let's have a look at it. So this is a portion of the week one study guide. It's not the complete one, but it's just enough to give you an idea of the questions and how the study guide works. So the study guide is arranged in order of the videos, right? And you can see it's there, up there it says, answer the following questions based on the succeeding in an online class video, right? And then, so it tells you exactly what video to watch and then you watch it and um, you can answer the questions, right? And if you can't answer the questions, you would want to rewatch the video or, or review that portion. And you, um, we'll come back to this, but in general, you want to answer and complete sentences. Sometimes people just mark down bullet points. And if you can't write out complete sentences, you maybe don't understand the information. There's a saying, you don't understand something unless you can teach it, right? If you can't explain something to someone else, you don't really understand it. And so a lot of times people just jot down some random bullet points taken from the PowerPoint or something like that. Then they don't, uh, without actually understanding what they're writing down, and then they don't do very well on the quiz, right? Remember, the quizzes are open notes, and that's the whole idea of the study guides, right? Is that you'll have the notes, you'll have the answers, you've already written them down, and if you've had that and reviewed it, the quizzes will be a snap, because these are very detailed study guides. Uh, you can see then there's the based on the syllabus video and the syllabus found online, then there's the next part. Then, and this can be a little bit more tricky, but then on number three, it says, what will this course not try and do? Start section zero. What that means is that all the questions until it says start something else are going to be from section zero or until I mark it something else. So three, four, and five are going to be from section zero, right? Three, four, and five are all going to be from section zero. What is the story it will try and tell as stated in the outline? What was life, general life for people before 1600? How has it changed? All those come from section zero. Then in question six, it changes, answer the following questions based on the Confucius video. So it should be clear because I will either have based on such and such video or it'll stay start section zero or one or two. So it should be very clear what the questions are based on. Now, when you look at these study guides, you may feel a little bit overwhelmed and say, wow, this is a huge amount of information. Well, remember, each day of a online class is like, you know, almost a week of regular class, right? So when you have a week of online class, that's like several weeks of a regular in-person class. And I should stress over the summer, right? Not, not all online classes are like that, but over the summer, that's how things work. So the key thing is there is a lot of information I do expect you to learn the information, so I want to be very clear what this information is going to be covered in the quizzes. And the way I do things is this. I prepare the study guides while looking at the videos, right? I make the video, I look back through the video, I make the study guide, and then when I make the quizzes and the exams, I'm looking at the study guide. And so you, you answer this in complete sentences, make sure you know it, save it, and I would encourage you to print it out. And then when it comes time to take your quiz or your exam, boom, you are ready. You know, you're in really, really good shape then to take your quiz or your exam. And you save these and keep reviewing them briefly because then you'll have them for the midterm and the final. Now, I think filling out these study guides properly is key, central to doing well in this course. I want to spend a little bit more time explaining how they work. So if you look at question seven, and there's an arrow pointing to it, it says, what are the characteristics of the Chinese imperial system? Start section one. So there will be material from section one that you need to understand. This tells you what questions are part of section one, 
right? So if you watch this, it will go down. Now, sometimes there'll be different parts. And if you look at how the videos are labeled, they will say things like, you know, section three, part two. And I don't divide it up by parts because sometimes there's questions that you have to watch multiple parts to really be able to answer. But I do divide it up by sections, right? So this may be, some questions may go to a different uh, part of the video, but it will stay within the section. So start section one. Then on question 20, it says answer the following questions based on the Hangul Museum video, right? So that's when you're not going to have one of the videos I make, the section one, section two, section three videos. Those are ones I've made. That's another kind of video, but it will still be in the Blackboard uh, week one folder, right? So you'll be able to just click on it there and they're all in the right order that follows the study guide, right? So the, the videos are going to follow the study guide. Then on question 21, it says, what is the relationship between Korea and China like? Why do both find this relationship acceptable? It says, continue section one. That lets you know we're back out of the Hangul Museum video. We're now continuing on with section one. And eventually it will say, start section two. All right, so it should be clear when we have different uh, videos and when you need to be moving on to a different set of questions. And that can help you if you miss a question to go back, right, and answer it. Now at the bottom, of the study guide, I will have a separate list of terms. These are names of either people or just uh, dynasties or things like that, that you need to be able to identify. Because this is a world history course, it's important to learn to be able to recognize the names of people who are important in world history and particularly those that are important to particular civilizations. So for example, Confucius, every Chinese person knows who Confucius is. So if you're gonna know something about world history, you gotta know who this guy is. And what I recommend for people is to you need to know where the person is from. So Confucius is from China. Sejong number nine is from Korea. Amaterasu number 12 is from Japan. Write down where that person is from, what their job was. For example, Matteo Ricci is an Italian Jesuit missionary who worked in China. Right? Uh, Sejong was a Korean king. So it's easy to do that. And why they're important. So for example, when I talk about Sejong, and you'll see this in section one, I talk about how he's so important because he's trying to develop a Korean alphabet and that asserts Korean identity, All right? So he's a Korean king who ordered the development of the Korean alphabet, very simple. For the terms, you need to note what the country the term is from and why it is important. So Hangul is from Korea and why is important? Well, it is the um, Korean alphabet, right? And you also need to know, so you need to know what something is and why it is important, right? Hangul is important. Uh, it, it, well, what it is, it is the Korean alphabet. It's from Korea. It's important because it shows how Koreans were developing their own identity. And one thing I really have to stress before we move on to the next slide is just how important, again, I think these study guides are. People who complete the study guides and do a good job on them do well in the class. People who do not do not do well in the class. And this is where I was talking about how like it takes time to do well in an online class, just like a regular class. And if you're looking at this and you, you download that study guide and you say, wow, this is way too much work, this is a sign that you should drop the class and take something else or concentrate on working or, or doing something else, right? I want to be very clear that this course does take work. I do expect people to learn the material. That takes time. The material is not easy because there will, I'm sure there's at least a couple names on this list you see here in this terms list that you don't know. And the best way to deal with that is, like I said, to take notes to learn the material. But that takes time. So you just want to think about that. And one thing I want to stress, if a student says to me, I'm having difficulty, I'm going to have, I'm having trouble. The first thing I'm going to ask them to do is to email me a copy of their study guide. Because that's how I can tell if a student is really learning the material or not. If a, student, if a student sends me the study guide and it's blank or has very little information, that's what's giving them trouble, right? Now, I'm not saying don't come to me for help. If you need help, I'm happy to give it. But if, I'm, you know, if you're not watching the videos and you want me to help you, my help is to give you the advice that you should watch the videos and take careful notes. So just keep that in mind. Study guides very important. If you don't think you're going to be able to complete them, then you maybe should think about a different course. Now, if you were to back out of the study guide, go back to the week one folder and scroll down to the bottom, you can see a little bit more of what I've been talking about. You can see it says section one, East Asia, part three, section one, East Asia, part four. 
and this is section two Muslim empires, right? And I, I do the section um, uh, sections by topic. So when we switch to a majorly different topic, that's when we switch to a different section. And so that's why I'll say start section one, start section two, start section three, because then that's when things are a little bit different. So we've got that section two Muslim empires part one, and that would be the last video you should watch for week one, right? So you watch all the videos in week one folder, and at the bottom, you can see those assignments that we saw in the week one schedule. So there's the first writing assignment, and below that is the introductory quiz. If you, that's the one you can take as many times as you want. So you can uh, make sure that you understand how to take a quiz. Other quizzes you only get to take once. So make sure that you learn how to do it with this quiz. I do want to take a little bit uh, of a closer look at the first writing assignment. So for the first writing assignment, uh, usually you're going to be reading like primary sources. So starting with week two, but week one, I really want to emphasize how important the study guides are, right? So for week one, you will answer the questions from the week one study guide. Your answer should be typed in complete sentences below each question, and you do not want to delete the questions. People sometimes delete the questions. Don't do that. Because if you delete the questions, it doesn't really help you for review. You'll have answers, but no questions. The key point of the study guide is to help you for review and then to help you uh, when you take the quizzes and the exams because they, they are open note, right? If you're taking good notes, you'll be in good shape. This assignment must be submitted to Blackboard in doc or docx format. If you don't upload in a readable format, that will result in minus two penalty to your grade by the deadline list in the schedule, which is Sunday. The assignment is worth 25 points. If you have trouble finding the necessary information, I would encourage you to re-watch the relevant video. Uh, sometimes people are like, oh, I'll just check it out on Wikipedia. Do not do that. Not because Wikipedia is a bad source. Oftentimes, Wikipedia is actually a very good source. But if you were to say, look up Matteo Ricci, oh my goodness, he has a very long Wikipedia article. I only want you to know a couple things about Matteo Ricci. So it's much better just to watch that section again. So just keep that in mind. So this assignment, this may seem very uh, kind of burdensome at first, but like I said, it helps you get, and I, I want to set early on how much time this class will take. But like I said, in the long run, if you can fill out these study guides and do it well, you're going to get a, a high grade in this class, no problem, right? Because in the quiz and exams will be very simple. And this is my way to make sure that students do this. Now, what often happens is people will do this the first time and then stop doing it because it's no longer a required assignment, but you don't want to do that. You want to continue doing that. It's really a good way to use your time to get the best grade you can. So do remember to do this and to make sure you include the questions as well as the answers. Type it up, get it up uploaded on time. So how do you do well in this class? Uh, first of all, keeping up with the weekly schedule, right? You do not want to fall behind. People in a summer class can easily fall behind. And the problem is because it's so compressed, right? If you miss a couple classes during a regular class semester, like in the fall or in the spring, it's not usually a huge deal. It depends on what it is. But if you miss a couple classes, if you kind of just zone out for a week with an online class, it can absolutely destroy your grade because it's so compressed. So keep up with that weekly schedule. One thing that also helps, I think, is to actually have a look at the study guide before you watch the videos, just to know what kind of information you're looking for then have a regular time for watching the videos. And I discussed this in succeeding in an online class, but I really want to men emphasize this. It's good to block off a certain time to watch the videos. I actually block off certain time for making videos, right? I choose the time that I'm the freshest, I'm the most awake, and that's when I make videos. You want to make sure you're actively listening, watching the videos. Don't have them on in the background and try and do something else. That will not work. You want to be watching them and taking notes while you're watching. I would encourage you to have the pause button ready so you can pause it, so you can finish taking notes if you need a little bit more time to catch up. That would also, if you want to, you can, at that moment, as we as you answer questions from the study guide, you know, as we look over the videos from the study, or as you're watching the video, you've got your study guide out. You're taking notes to based on the relevant study guide question, pause it, turn those notes into full sentences, right? Whatever works for you. The key thing is that you're paying attention to the movie, to the video, to the documentary, whatever it is. You're watching it. You're taking notes. I think it's a really good thing to do is to have your uh, study guide open, take notes under those questions, under the relevant question, and then make them into um, complete sentences either after pausing the video or once you're done with that video. Also, one thing I highly recommend is for the terms to make note cards. You have the, the name of the person on one side and then all that other information on the other. 
I actually, my in-person class, that's a required assignment that people make note cards, but I'm not going to require it in this class because it'd be very hard for you to turn them in. Once you complete the relevant video, if you have not already done so, answer those study guide questions and make note cards. Review your notes, study guides, and note cards frequently. If you try and take the quiz without reviewing your notes, try and take an exam without reviewing your notes frequently, you're not going to do well. And you're going to be like, wow, a minute's just not enough time to answer these questions. That's because you don't know the material. And I've written the exam with the understanding that, and the expectation, I should say, that people will learn the material. Right, so review your notes, study guides and note cards frequently, even though these are open note. Right, review them frequently. And one thing, and you don't want to do this as a substitutioner's cramming, right before you take the quiz or exam, just do a quick glance through your notes, just so you're, you're familiar again with them. Make sure you complete all the assignments, exams, and quizzes on time. If you run into problems, deal with them early. Right, like I said, I will be checking email frequently. I will be able to respond to emails. And I mentioned this again in the succeeding in an online section, but I will mention this again. Do not put off tests until the last minute. Do not do that, right? Um, I mentioned earlier I had a student, very smart student, but she kept doing badly on her exams because she waited till like 10 p.m. Sunday to take the exams, and she was just tired. So make sure you're taking those exams when you're fresh. All that being said, if you have trouble, if you have issues, please let me know. Uh, I want you to, I love this material. I want students to learn the material and do well, and I'm happy to do what I can to help you do those things. So good luck with the class, and I look forward to working with you.